this video is sponsored oh by Private Internet Access. Oh Just in case you thought that all YouTubers are millionaires, I have qualified for and received every single stimulus check that Uncle Sam has sent out to date. Do you think Mark Rober got a stimulus check? No. I got a stimulus check because the apartment I live in is made of 3% asbestos. So how is Alan Pan going to stimulate the economy? Well, the meme answer would be to buy a guillotine and leave it in front of Jeff Bezos' house. But of all the ways to decapitate people, I think a guillotine is actually one of the more boring ones. That's why I'm going to spend my money on an anime horse decapitating sword. Giant anime swords are probably based on the real-life Chinese anti-cavalry horse beheading swords called the Sun Madao. Wait, that doesn't sound quite right. I think it's more like, like, Zama Dao. Ugh, uh, Naomi Wu, can you help me out? Zama <laughs> Dao. Thanks, Naomi. In fiction, these swords can get really, 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 really ridiculously big, but somehow nobody in these shows and video games and movies ever has any trouble swinging them. This is my friend Rob the Welder. Rob, can you make me something anime as fuck? Basically, I just told Rob to Google Buster Sword and to make a generic version of that. If you want to see the whole build video, I've linked to Rob's channel in the description. Of course, just because we can make a giant anime sword in real life doesn't mean anyone could actually wield a giant anime sword in real life. It's all about the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the legs, right? It's, it's all not in the legs. Your, your legs are what's holding the sword. Jesus. <laughs> How much does it feel like it weighs? Uh, like a couple hundred pounds. <laughs> so how much does my giant buster sword weigh? Well, failed buster sword Alan Pan, as I've named it, comes in at 50 pounds. Which is like kind of heavy, but also not impossibly heavy. Oh, yeah. Careful. These guys look uh, thicker. Two C's, I might be able to do it. Most of you watching this video can probably lift 50 pounds no problem. And these dudes look like they should be able to also. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. What do you mean you can't? Lift it up, you're, you're holding it, come on. Go. But they can't. So what's going on here? I can lift this 35 pound kettlebell pretty easily, but if I move it to the side by even a few inches and try and lift it when it's offset from my wrist, it quickly becomes unliftable. This offset weight creates a rotational force on my wrist called torque. The center of mass of failed buster sword Alan Pan is three feet from the end of the handle. That means in this position, with the pivot point at the very end of the handle, the sword is generating 150 foot-pounds of torque. Or in other words, the same amount of rotational force that a typical car engine produces. The trick here is you want to move the pivot point as close to the center of gravity as possible. And then you're kind of just pushing the sword up with your other hand. Ugh. And then you can kind of lift it that way. Ugh. And then you're not really swinging it. You're just doing a controlled drop like this. <laughs> You see this technique used a lot on giant sword channels like Michael Cthulhu, and he has an awesome channel. He makes really cool weapons, but it's just not as satisfying watching a dude pry up a weight and just letting it fall. I want to use my sword like a sword. There was a movie that came out in 2014 called The Edge of Tomorrow, and that title was so bland and non-descriptive, but this movie was an adaptation of a Japanese manga called All You Need Is Kill. Which is such a better title, I think is indisputable proof that marketers don't actually know what they're doing. Emily Blunt here has a powered exoskeleton, and that's what's actually providing the strength and the torque that she needs to be able to wield her giant anime sword. And you know what? I'm a big fan of Emily Blunt, so I'm just gonna copy her. This is an awesome movie, and unfortunately it's also one that I cannot watch here in the US. And that is why this video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. Literally, that's the entire reason. I just wanted to watch this movie. Private Internet Access is the leading no-log secure VPN provider with over 30 million downloads. It has over 20,000 VPN servers in over 70 countries around the world. It's available for all operating systems. One subscription covers up to 10 devices at once. And it's really easy to use. First you click this, and then you type in what country you want to be from. I'm going to say Sweden because I'm a big fan of Simone Yaj. And then you click this, and now my computer is in Sweden, and I can watch The Edge of Tomorrow. Pretend that my face is your IP address and you don't want the bank over there to know your IP address. So I put on this horse head mask so that I have a different IP address now. If you are watching this right now, it means you can get three months for free and then two years after that for just $2.59 a month if you head to the link in the description. So I spent the rest of my stimulus money on this Steadicam exoskeleton. <laughs> this might actually be one of the coolest things I've ever bought and it only cost me $900. <laughs>
For real though, that's actually a really good price for these. I bought this used, so it's already had quite a bit of mileage, and on top of that, it's like a cheap Chinese knockoff. These camera stabilizing exoskeletons are designed to offset the weight of a heavy camera so that a camera person can move it around as if it was much lighter. Whereas active exoskeletons require a power source for pistons or motors or other actuators, this exoskeleton is entirely passive. There's no power supply because the force is provided by springs. The only downside is if you don't have anything to weigh your arms down, they actually are just stuck up here like this. So this is gonna be part of a two-pronged approach. One, hopefully the suit is going to be able to offset the weight of the sword itself. And two, uh, we're gonna have to come up with some kind of a wrist sword handle mount that has like a torsional spring or something to offset all of that torque when the sword goes horizontal. First things first, I gotta make this suit stronger. It didn't come with specs or a manual or anything, but from what I can tell, it was designed to be used with cameras that weigh 20 to 30 pounds. So I'm attaching additional mounting hardware to the suit so I can add more springs. More springs means more tension, means more counterforce, means more of the weight of the sword gets canceled out. Bada bing, bada boom. Ba bing, ba boom. You notice how it's weird if you get rid of the does? It's a ba 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 I've modified uh, the suit and it's definitely got a little more tension now. If you remember, these are my lead Hulk hands. Ugh, they weigh 35 pounds a piece. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh... I want to see if it's actually any easier to lift them with the suit and already it feels like this is like actually significant whoa like this is significantly easier we can actually compare this to when i first put these on oh oh this is very difficult yeah yeah yes and i can actually just hold these up like this is this is kind of wild like i can throw a whole bunch and hold the fist out in front of myself. <laughs> this is actually really cool. <laughs> Take this, environment! Ooh. Yeah! Da! Yeah. Da! Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I think, I think my arm's broke. <laughs> this whole can still goes up, but this whole can is suddenly a lot harder to lift. Is there something? Something's loose. What? You see? Dude. Oh, it's just, the arm can It's just gone. <laughs> Did something break? Yeah, it looks like the Quick Connect. Quick Connect in this case means this one stupid little spring tension pin. And that's literally the only thing that was holding the arms to the back plate. The suit is made entirely out of aluminum, which is like the, the butter of structural metals. And you can see that here where the pin sheared right out of its mating hole. So I'm replacing that stupid pin with a through bolt, but the fact still is that this suit, it just wasn't designed to handle this kind of mechanical stress. We did design this articulated wrist mount, kind of like a Marky Mark's uh, spring-powered football kicker, and that was what was gonna offset the torque generated by the sword. But after this test, I'm convinced that the suit just would not be able to handle it. So instead of trying something smarter, I'm gonna try something stupider. I'm doing this the stupidest way I can think of. So we've got this bungee cable here. This is gonna go right to the center of gravity of the sword. We're not gonna have to deal with leverage or torque. I just wanna be an anime protagonist. Now here's the part I'm not entirely sure about because now I have to try and- Have you tested position. this yet? Of course not. Oh, I think the vectors here are really weird, but I'm gonna try and see if I can- Oh! Ah! Oh! It worked! I mean, it looked sloppy. This is very sloppy, but it totally works. The suit itself is taking care of the way of the sword, right? And as soon as I hold this horizontal, the bungee ought to take care of the rest. So I should be able to hold this out. Oh! You see that? <laughs> this is like Cloud Strife Buster Sword stance. And I can even lower it all the way down if I want and chop oh, something. Shit! And I can bring it up. No problem. Oh my god. Yeah! Oh god, okay. My center of gravity, this whole system changes drastically when I swing. This is so scary. Now, this is a move that I think would be really hard to do without the suit. Here we go. Three, two, one. It's still so difficult. But definitely not something I could do without it. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Whoa! <laughs>
The sword in this clip from Demolition Ranch weighs 120 pounds, which is a lot. But the dude trying to wield it is Robert Oberst, who is literally a strongman competition winner. Here he is lifting 465 pounds right over his head. But even this dude can't lift a oh, yeah, giant sword upright, let alone swing it properly. I mean, look at him. He looks like a like a giant bebe. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna die. I want to compare me and my exoskeleton to a legitimately strong guy, so I searched high and low on Instagram for the biggest dude I could get my hands on. <laughs> uh, this is for a joke in the video. I'm not I'm not touching you just to touch you. Okay. I'm here with Chase Lee. Do you ever have to worry about peeing because you're afraid you're gonna rip your own dick off? <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! Are you serious? I have the power! He just did it without. Kick it straight up. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! That was. I am covered. I am. Well, I can pick it up too, you know. My turn. Three, two, one. Ah! Oh my god! That was almost as good as his. Pump it a couple times in the air. Oh okay, God. but I can do that. I can do that. Put it down, put it down. I can do it. Hey, that's pretty good. Can you get some of those up front? Which one you want? There's yeah, kill ones. the tree, Alan. Kill the tree. See, I can do the exact same things Chase can do. I'm just waiting for you to throw up right now. <laughs> <laughs> According to the backyard scientist, Alan Pan said that a coconut is a really good representation of a human skull. That means it must be true. Oh. Oh. He broke oh. the table! Oh. I, uh, I only broke one table because I didn't think that we were going to break the table. Dude, I don't know if I can hit it. I'm going to try it. Oh, two, one. Oh, no! I missed! <laughs> missed. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Oh! There! Uh. Well, took two hits was basically the same thing. It's a horse decapitating sword, so we gotta test it on a real horse. Like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I think that's funny. Oh! <laughs> well, it works! Woo! Myth confirmed, you really can decapitate a horse with a sword. That was such a most half-assed experiment you've ever done. <laughs> so clearly, in this case, brawn beats brain. But hey. I can always try and improve the suit later, and also, there's this. How many hours do you spend a week in the gym? Two, three hours a day. So like 14, fit like, like 20, 23 hours, 23 hours a week yeah. in the gym? Probably, yeah. You know how many hours a week I spend in the gym? <laughs> Zero. Zero, 